Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, solve any equation you want. Um, now, earlier in my first video, and this is my second, in my first video, we had graphed a line and a parabola. And the equations of these two functions, uh, we had typed under y equals, which is uh, a yellow button, and therefore we get there by hitting this yellow button first, and then F1. Uh, and the two equations were the line there and the parabola here. Now, if we go back to uh, the graph option, which is um, yellow, so diamond, and then F3, uh, we'd return to the graphs, and I had said that we could use the menus up here to find the points of intersection of the two functions. But remember, finding point of intersections is the same as setting uh, the equation of the two functions equal to each other and solving. So why don't we do that? I'll show you how to uh, go from here to find the point of intersection from the menus up here, but let's first uh, show you a much more powerful way to solve and really my standard way to solve any equation, including one that comes from um, setting two functions equal to each other, right? Now, if we set x squared um, equal to um, 2x plus 1, then that would find us a point of intersection of uh, the two functions and therefore where the two graphs meet. So let's solve that equation, x squared equals uh, 2x plus 1, and this is how we do it. We start uh, from our home button, and then we hit F2. And from the dropdown um, of F2, we automatically have solve, right? That's the first choice. And so we hit enter, and then we type the equation we want to solve, which is x squared um, is equal to um, 2x and then plus one, right? Okay, but we're not done. There's uh, important syntax to finish. We gotta tell it what to solve for. So we write comma, solve for x. So comma x, close parenthesis. Notice that solve comes uh, with an open parenthesis and that's typical of any option you choose in this uh, calculator. So yeah, all right, there, there we are. And then now we hit enter. And those are the two points of intersection of uh, the two graphs. So if we go back, um, the two numbers we displayed are the x-coordinate of that point of intersection and then the x-coordinate of that point of intersection. So let's go back home and look at them. So the two numbers are right there, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. But solve uh, does not solve uh, if the equation doesn't have a real solution. So if we look at something like x squared plus 1, equals zero, we know that there are no real solutions to the equation x squared plus one equals zero. And so solve cannot give you solutions here. I hit enter and it says false. So what you gotta do is go back to F2 and choose C solve so that you can get complex solutions. And C solve lives way far down. Uh, and so you scroll down and by the way we have factor, expand, zeros. Zeros is redundant to solve, so I don't really use it, but yeah. And you have other options that I don't even know about, and then we skip um, trig, and then here we are in complex, and we hit the right arrow here, and then we have C solve. So we select C solve, and then now type x squared, by the way, for square cube, you got to use this button, but yeah, x squared um, plus one, and then um, equals zero. Uh, and then comma x, so the syntax for C solve is the same as the syntax for solve. And then close parenthesis, hit enter. And as we expected, we get the two complex solutions, i and negative i, yeah? Cool, 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 cool. All right, now, um, as I said, I don't use uh, zeros, but uh, we can uh, use zeros to get these same two solutions. Well, actually, we can't. Um, or we can maybe, so zeros solves complex and real. I guess that's its advantage as opposed to using solve, but it has slightly different syntax. And I don't really use zeros like I said, but let's try and uh, solve um, for the zeros of x squared um, plus one. That is like solve for x squared, x squared plus one equals zero. But in uh, this zeros um, option, you don't have to write equals zero because well, the name says it, right? All right, and then, uh, but otherwise the syntax is the same as solve, which is that you gotta put a comma x. All right, and hit enter. Uh, and it returned nil, so the empty set. So actually it does not solve um, for complex roots. So uh, zeros is 
not only limited, but like kind of got to learn another syntax. So don't use zeros. Like I said, I don't use it. But yeah, um, I know that it solves uh, when you have real solutions. So uh, let's find the zeros of x squared minus one, which we know are uh, positive one and negative one. And let's hit enter and no surprise, negative one and positive one. But I use solve, I don't use zeros. All right, cool, cool, cool. So before I say we are done with this video, let me show you how to solve trig equations, trigonometric equations, which have a different syntax uh, um, than like any other type of equation. So when you're uh, using solve or C solve with any equation you like, then the syntax is as displayed here, right? Which is you type the equation and then comma x, whether you're using C solve or solve. Um, but uh, if you're solving a trig equation, then there's extra syntax. And that's because like, you know, if I try to solve for sine of x is equal to one half, there are infinitely many solutions. So the calculator like will not look for those infinitely many solutions. Um, and so what you got to do is like add extra syntax and restrict uh, the intervals along the x axis where you want to look. So let's let's use that example exactly actually. And we don't have to do everything over. We could just type 0.5 here for one half. And then on the left side of the equation, we want sine x, right? So sine is blue. So we have to hit second or the blue button and then y. And then now we've got sine and then sine of x. Okay, sine of x equals a half, like I said, has infinitely many solutions. Uh, but we can make those finitely many solutions if we re restrict uh, the interval along the x-axis where we want to look for those solutions. So how we restrict is to use this vertical bar right here uh, below the equal to button. And the vertical bar in math is like such that. So this is like such that. And then such that what? Uh, 90 degrees is less than... Um, well, actually, let me go like uh, negative, uh, negative 100 degrees. By the way, if I want to write negative 100, I can now use this minus sign right here. I use this minus sign if I want to do 6 minus 2. If you want to mean a negative number, you have to use this little minus sign at the bottom. So I'm going to say negative 100 degrees um, to what? To like 100 degrees. So I'll say negative 100 degrees is less than and less than is right here at the bottom, right? And so we'll, uh, and it's in blue, so we have to hit second and then the zero button. H negative 100 degrees is less than x is uh, less than, so again, uh, 100 degrees, right? So that's 100. And then this is it, right? So you put a vertical bar to say the restriction begins, and then you type the restriction like I did. Now, one extra thing is like, what if you want to say less than or equal to? Well, you know, you don't you could avoid it, right? Like so if I wanted to include a, a negative 100, I could just go negative 101. So that's one way to deal with that. But another way to deal with with it is even though there is no button that says less than or equal to here, you can get a less than or equal to button if you instead hit this yellow button or diamond and then hit less than. Notice that there's nothing yellow here, but you get a less than or equal to that way. So that's another way to deal with it. But yeah, I guess I can keep this because I wasn't really like solving this. I just made this up, so I don't really care what solutions we get. So you can restrict it in this way. And now um, the last thing we got to do is since our restriction is in degrees instead of radians, we have to go to mode, uh, which is right here, and ensure that we are in uh, degree mode. But uh, we are not. We're in radian mode right here. So we go to the right and switch to degree mode, hit enter, and then come back and now hit enter and it will solve and there it is the only solution it says from negative 100 degrees to 100 degrees is x equals 30 degrees um, and that should be the only solution right all right cool 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 um, so this is it and this is how you solve and I hope you found this very useful and keep watching many more uh, lessons to come